everyone, this is Stephanie with the Simply Special Ed blog, and I'm going to show you how to set up a Google presentation for students who use iGaze or students that use iGaze and are visually impaired. I do this every day with my distance learning activities. I just kind of try to mimic what we do in class. So the first thing you need is a black background. So when you are doing your Google slide, you want to make sure to set the background to black and you can do that by going to background choose your color mine's already set to black and then add to theme so that all of your if you have multiple slides and they're all black the reason we want to use black is it's dark it's a nice contrast to whatever highlight color they use and it's not cluttered or distracting so if I'm going to present like a choice card for instance, um, maybe they have done their work, my students finish their work and they get to choose something for free time or before their work, if we are using first then, my student will choose what they are working for. So the first thing that I do is I create a box to put my picture card in that is in their highlight color. And I move this box all the way to the corner. Now, if you do not know what your particular student's highlight color is, yellow and red are the most common. So we'll do one box in yellow and one box in red so that you can see the difference. Now I have students in my class whose highlight colors, which means these are the colors that they see best, um, include purple and pink and green. So it can vary, but these colors are always pretty good. So I take my picture symbol, which I already have two here. So this is our symbol that we use for board game. And I'm going to put that here. I'm going to resize it so that it fits inside my, um, my little square. And then I'm going to take my picture for music and I'm going to resize it so it fits in my little square and I'm going to make sure that my picture symbols are at the very edge of the screen. The reason I'm doing this is because when I ask them to choose on their end I'm going to click present. So now when they see these pictures they are furthest apart. Our students that use eye gaze and visual impairment need that space in the middle. So a lot of my students have cortical vision impairment and they're like at a level one or two. So I have to make sure to keep the um, squares a decent distance apart. Now, remember that when you are broadcasting your screen to a student, it is going to be mirrored. So we're seeing music on the right and board game on the left, but for them it's in reverse. So when you are watching their eyes to see where they look, when you're doing your Google Meets or Zoom meeting, you want to remember that. So I will remember that for my student, music is on the left. So if she looks to the left and she sustains her eye attention there, I know that she's choosing music as her reward or what she's working for. I don't want to forget that it's mirrored and choose board game for her because then I'm completely overriding her choice, which was not the point of this. <laughs> now I do do this with a couple other things. So I might, my, this particular student uses green highlight, so hers is green. I might do this for yes and no. Make sure that you are consistent with your therapist. This is our agreed yes and no symbol at this time. Uh, I will also do this for activities. So if I'm having them choose between a number, there'll be like a one on one side and two on the other or for letters in their name and vocabulary and so on. If your student can choose out of three things, don't be afraid to make these smaller and put a third field in the middle. If your student is like some of my students and we're really just learning to sustain eye attention, it's okay to have your shape or number or whatever in the highlight color on the screen and ask say, student, can you find the triangle? and help them learn to track their object. And just remember, we're reversed. So if my student, if he looks to the left, he is not looking at the triangle. But if he looks to the right, when I'm looking at his eyes, 
he is looking at the triangle. And the best part about um, Google Slides is that I, just like PowerPoint, I can get out of this and maybe um, my student finds my triangle, I can move it around and we can do it again. And that way I can kind of see like how we're doing with our field of vision and where we are able to look right now. So I, like I said, I do this all the time when I do my meets with my students, uh, numbers, vocabulary, board games, we do it all with a black background so that we are the least distracting possible. I will even turn my picture off so that I am not distracting the student. I have purple hair and so sometimes that grabs their attention. So I will even turn myself off and just share my screen with them. So thank you for listening today. That's how I prepare a screen for distance learning for students that have visual impairment and or use eye gaze. It's been really successful and I've been excited about the progress my students have made with communication. So hopefully this helps you do the same.